Superstar free agents are gonna get all the attention. But you know, there's a few guys out there making some pretty big moves. Man, I always have two goals for myself everywhere I go is to get better and have fun. So I look forward to getting here, working really hard, and to enjoy it. Try not to sleep on these 10 under-the-radar free agent signings who could pay major dividends for their new teams in 2024. Gardner Minshew II After releasing Jimmy Garoppolo, the Las Vegas Raiders turned to the bargain bin and signed Gardner Minshew II to a two-year deal with $25 million. This move didn't get too much attention for a variety of reasons. One, Aiden O'Connell has the inside track for the starting job, and secondly, there's a very real possibility that the Raiders draft their QB of the future in the early rounds. But regardless of what Vegas does at the draft, we're very much loving this Minshew signing. It is the ultimate low-risk move for a high-end backup who can still be a capable starter when the Asian calls for it. Minshew was the Indianapolis Colts main starter in 2023, with rookie Anthony Richardson missing most of the year. He was 7-6-0 as a starter, with 3,305 passing yards and 15 touchdowns against just 9 interceptions. The Colts just barely lost a winner-go-home Week 18 contest to the Houston Texans. Minshew played well on a rebuilding indie team. Now he goes to Vegas with a top 5 wideout in Devontae Adams, plus another quality weapon like Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer, and Zemir White. And nobody said that the Raiders can't add even more weapons for Minshew and O'Connell at the draft. Minshew has performed nicely wherever he's played. Jacksonville, Philadelphia, Indianapolis. If he beats out O'Connell for the starting job, these Raiders could very well re-emerge as a playoff contender after winning eight games with three different QBs a year ago. Leonard Floyd After productive one-year stop with the Buffalo Bills, Floyd signed a two-year pact with the San Francisco 49ers worth only $20 million. The 49ers had released veteran mainstay and fan favorite Eric Armstead in a cap-saving move, and GM John Lynch wasted no time trying to bring in a suitable replacement. Not only did he clear money by releasing Armstead, but Lynch may have found a better player here in Floyd at a better price no less. Floyd has posted nine sacks in each of the last four seasons, having played second fiddle to Aaron Donald in LA for three years before joining the Bills. With Von Miller enduring a down 2023 season, Floyd emerged as Buffalo's top edge rusher and finished with 10.5 sacks, a career best for the Super Bowl 56 champion with the Rams. Now Floyd joins forces with one of the football's elite pass rushers in Nick Bosa. With the latter commanding most of the attention from opposing teams, Floyd will flourish as a sidekick to the 2022 Defensive Player of the Year. And Floyd's championship experience can only help a 49ers team that keeps getting oh so close to a Lombardi Trophy. Just a beautiful piece of work here by the reigning NFC champions and getting Floyd on a cheap two-year deal. Zach Moss After trading Joe Mix into the Houston Texans in a cap-saving move, the Cincinnati Bengals found the ideal replacement by signing former Colts running back Zach Moss to a two-year deal worth $8 million. The Bengals cleared $6.1 million in cap space by dealing Mix in. So, essentially, it cost them less than $2 million to get Moss, who carries far less mileage than Mixon and is all around more explosive at this phase of his career. With Jonathan Taylor missing a chunk of time, Moss made the most of his increased playing time in Indy by finishing with 794 rushing yards and 5 touchdowns. If Moss hadn't missed 3 games due to injury, he would have made a hard push for his first 1K season. Moss is the undisputed number one running back in Cincy, and he should have no problem building off last year's career best if he stays healthy. Cincinnati got another explosive weapon for Joe Burrow at a basement bargain price. If Bengals fans haven't forgotten about Joe Mixon yet, they will by the time Moss takes the field in a Cincy uniform. Darius Williams After a two-year stint with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Williams returned to the Los Angeles Rams on a three-year pact worth $22.5 million. Though teammate and all-pro Jalen Ramsey overshadowed him, Williams was quietly one of the more effective number two corners during his first run in La La Land. Williams had six interceptions and 27 pass defenses in four years there. In his breakout 2020 season, Williams allowed just a 54.2 completion percentage and yielded only a 63.9 passer rating when targeted per pro football reference. Over his two years in Jacksonville, Williams only allowed 101 completions on 191 targets per PFR. Passer rating allowed when targeted in 2022 and 2023 was 68.7 and 63.9 respectively. Williams' 79.5 pro football focus grade of 2023, by the way, was considerably higher than the likes of Jair Alexander, Denzel Ward, Patrick Sertan II, Marshawn Lattimore, and Marlon Humphrey. So Williams returns to a familiar place where he won a Super Bowl ring. Given his familiarity in the Rams' defensive schemes, he should have no problem easing his way back into things. This was an absolute home run of a pickup by Sean McVay's squad.
KJ Osborne. In year one of the post-Bill Belichick era, the New England Patriots decided not to spend too lavishly in free agency. They instead went to the bargain hunting route, and new GM Elliot Wolf just might have struck gold with the signing of ex-Minnesota Vikings wideout KJ Osborne, who agreed to a one-year deal with a modest $4 million. Osborne became a regular in Minnie's offense during his 2021 sophomore year. Despite having to share targets with Justin Jefferson, the league's top wide receiver, Adam Thielen, TJ Hawkinson, and later Jordan Addison, Osborne still put up consistently solid numbers numbers for the Vikings. He had at least 48 receptions and 540 receiving yards in each of his last three years with Minnie. This underrated deep threat averaged 11.7 yards per reception, with 86 of his 158 catches going for first downs. Now Osborne will get every opportunity to establish himself as the number one receiver on a very thin Patriots pass-catching depth chart. If he could put up solid number three numbers as a number four option in Minnesota's offense, I mean, just imagine what Osborne could do in an expanded role. Osborne's arrival in New England isn't getting many headlines but do not be shocked if he has a career year in Foxborough, and if it leads to a contract extension. This could be an absolute jackpot of a signing by the post-Belichick Patriots. Cameron Curl Speaking of Los Angeles Rams newcomers, the Rams continue to reshape their secondary by signing former Washington commander safety Cameron Curl to a surprisingly cheap two-year deal with $9 million. That deal especially feels like a win for the Rams when you consider that Curl signed a far less average annual value than inferior safeties like Kevin Byer, Darnell Savage, and Rayshon Jenkins. He is an elite run stopper with run grade defensive grades of 79.1 or better at PFF in each of the last two seasons. And with a final grade of 82.9 in 2022, Curl finished as PFF's number four ranked safety for the 2022 season. That year, he had an elite coverage grade of 80.8, by the way. With three interceptions, 14 pass defenses, and five sacks, Curl has established himself as a do-it-all safety who can line up anywhere on defense. The Rams can just use him in a hybrid role the way that they did with Ramsey. With Curl and Williams in the fold, there is no telling how much the LA secondary will improve in 2024. Getting these two on such cheap deals is just another reminder as to why Les Snead is one of the best executives in the business. Mitch Morse A brutal salary cap situation forced the Buffalo Bills to release several big-name players this offseason, including center Mitch Morse and defensive backs Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, and Tredavious White. Bills' loss to Morse was a Jaguars gain, as Jacksonville signed the former pro bowler to a two-year deal worth only $10.5 million. Jacksonville's shaky O-line gave up 41 sacks last season. With Morse replacing Luke Fortner as the starting center, Trevor Lawrence can sure expect much better pass protection up front. Per PFF, Morse allowed only one sack on 1,128 offensive snaps last season. In fact, he allowed exactly only one sack in three of his five seasons with the Bills, never allowing more than three in a single year. And now Morris gets the block for a borderline top 10 QB and an elite running back in Travis Etienne Jr., and it'll barely cost the Jaguars any money? Oh yeah, this was a sneaky good signing by the Jaguars. And if they manage to rebound from an awfully disappointing 2023 season, Morris's contributions in the trenches will have been a key reason as to why. Josh Reynolds The Denver Broncos have been pretty quiet in free agency. They released quarterback Russell Wilson and all-pro safety Justin Simmons, and top wide receiver Jerry Judy was traded to the Cleveland Browns for two late-round picks. But GM George Payton made at least one signing on the offensive side of the ball, signing ex-Detroit Lions wide receiver Josh Reynolds to a two-year deal with $9 million. This move feels awfully similar to the K.J. Osborne signing in New England. Like Osborne, a healthy Reynolds is a consistent threat for 40 receptions and 500-plus receiving yards. But consider this, Detroit had two running backs put up over 1,000 yards of offense last year. Amon Ross St. Brown led the team with 1,515 receiving yards, with rookie tight end Sam Laporta finishing behind him with 889 yards. So, even as Detroit's number five option, Reynolds tallied 40 catches for 608 yards and five touchdowns. And if the Broncos don't make any big splashes, they'll go into 2024 with Reynolds, Marvin Mims Jr., and Cortland Sutton as their top receivers. In other words, Reynolds will get every opportunity to emerge the new number one in Mile High City. No more taking a backseat to St. Brown, Laporta, Jameer Gibbs, or David Montgomery in Detroit. It's Reynolds' chance to shine with a new team now. DJ Reader the Lions entered this offseason needing to find another stud defensive lineman to take the pressure off Aiden Hutchinson. The number two pick of 2022 was the only player to exceed five sacks on the NFC runner-ups after all. Well, GM Brad Holmes may have found his guy in ex-Bengals star defensive tackle DJ Reader, who agreed to a two-year deal with $22 million. Reader is finished with a PFF grade of 80.8 or higher over each of his last three seasons. He's one of the league's most well-rounded defensive tackles with explosive pass rushing abilities and elite run-stopping skills. Reader's sack numbers won't wow you, 
but he's going to open up more room for Hutchinson and Detroit's other edge rushers to get home to the QB. A run-stopping giant of his caliber could be the difference in a potential playoff game against an elite rushing offense like San Francisco and Philadelphia, too. Cordarrelle Patterson The Steelers performed quite the facelift on offense. They replaced all three QBs, Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, and Mason Rudolph, with Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, and Kyle Allen. Number two wideout Deontay Johnson was dealt to the Carolina Panthers in a surprise move. Too much to keep track of? Well, don't miss the Steelers' savvy signing of four-time pro bowler Cordarrelle Patterson, who agreed to a two-year deal worth only $6 million. Also, don't forget that Steelers offensive coordinator Arthur Smith unlocked Patterson as a do-it-all weapon during their time together with the Atlanta Falcons. In Smith's first year as Atlanta's head coach in 2021, Patterson had 618 rushing yards, six rushing scores, 52 receptions, 548 receiving yards, and five receiving scores, go along with 434 punt return yards. Cards. In 2022, Patterson tallied 695 rushing yards and 8 rushing scores, both career best. Keep in mind that there was only so many touches for Patterson, with B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and Tyler Algier also needing the football. Patterson may not see a whole lot of carries with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren in the backfield, but he could see more playing time as a receiver. The bottom line is that Smith will have limitless options with Patterson on end arounds, gadget plays, and reverses. Oh, and the Steelers' kick return game just got even more dangerous with the four-time first-team All-Pro fielding kickoffs. But which other NFL under-the-radar free agent signings could pay off big time in 2024? Was there anyone that we may have missed? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS, though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.